Police still searching for two suspects after an early morning shooting ends with one man dead just a block behind a popular Broadway apartment complex. We have the details. And NEISD is offering virtual counseling while students are at home. We're going to see how it works. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. If you have business at any local military base, be prepared to practice patience along with good hygiene. Joint Base San Antonio says extra measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus could lead to extra delays at the gates. Katrina Weber reports the Monday morning traffic crunch came on the heels of a weekend announcement of more military cases. Even in the heavy fog, you could see a bit more Monday in this morning. Traffic heading to Joint Base Lackland was backed up beyond belief. This morning there was really traffic in the morning since 530. There was a line on for everywhere. Ignacio Zaragoza watched it from the takeout window at El Charo de Jalisco. Potential customers driving right by. Nobody have a time to stand by because uh, they're late or they've been in line for like 20 minutes, so they had no time to come in. The traffic delays were predicted, not only for Lackland, but for Randolph and Fort Sam Houston too. JBSA says extra measures are being taken in response to the coronavirus pandemic, including limiting gate access and checking driver's ID cards through closed windows. The military confirmed two more cases this weekend, bringing the total at local bases to 13. Long before they reached the gate, a lot of these drivers seemed to be obeying orders to keep their windows closed, even when it came to talking to us. The backed up traffic, meanwhile, is just one more hurdle for Zaragoza. City restrictions already had his dining room off limits, leaving his staff with little to do. We have a lot of people, but we don't know no work for them, you know? Probably they only be working once a week, each one. Soon, he fears there may be no work for them at all. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And right now, with the testing available, there are 45 positive cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. One person died from the virus over the weekend, and in Texas, five deaths and 304 positive cases. We are expecting updated numbers shortly, and we will continue to update you as they come in. Be sure to watch KSAT and look for KSAT.com's coronavirus tab for the latest. Right now, schools across the country are closed and kids are learning online. Without in-person classes, though, they're also missing out on in-school mental health help. But Northeast ISD is now offering phone lines for counseling questions or concerns. I had a chance to speak with any ISD counselors this morning about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Take a look. We are here at Churchill High School where they're addressing mental health, making sure that there are several counselors on hand to speak to students and to families about mental health. We are joined by one of those counselors right here at Lucio. So Ed, why is mental health so important during this pandemic? It's important during this time of social distancing. Um, a lot of our students are really isolated at this point. So um, when students are isolated, sometimes it'll tend to intensify any kind of mental health challenges that they might have. So it's important that we support them. So we have our call line here at Churchill High School. Uh, they can call in, we can support them with whatever they may need. Even though they can't physically be on campus, we still wanna make sure that they know that we are still here to support them with whatever they may need. What is your message to those students and to those families at this time? Uh, the message is we're all in this together. Uh, we're all a community. And at this time, that's pretty challenging for all of us. If we all can come together and work together for with the best interests for our students, I think uh, we'll all be successful at the end for it. Now it is important to mention NEISD isn't just offering help over the phone, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Throughout the weekdays, counselors are also available for students via email, Zoom, Google Hangouts, Google Classrooms, and other virtual means. If you have any questions, we have the website right now. Just head to ksat.com. And again, to learn more about NEISD counseling, more on our website. Just search the KSAT Kids tab. Meantime, East Central ISD started delivering meals to students at home with school buses today. This is the latest district to start making such deliveries. Meals include lunch for the day and breakfast for the following morning. The program is available to all students 18 and younger in the district. Buses will continue to do this for the foreseeable future. And they will park in a lot and distribute the food while providing for proper social distancing. The district says there'll be enough food for everyone and asks that nobody rush or crowd the buses. 
And an important thing to mention during this pandemic is also blood supplies are low and you can donate blood today at the Shrine Auditorium to help San Antonio's critical blood shortage. Now you can schedule an appointment with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center until 2 this afternoon. A representative for the center says giving blood is safe and they're doing everything they can to keep donors safe during this outbreak. We are making sure all our donors are safe. We're taking plenty of precautions. We're taking temperatures when they come in. We're making sure everyone is able to be at social distance, the correct social distancing. And we are also sanitizing all the beds as donors leave. Remember, you must schedule an appointment before you donate. Donors will also receive an HEB gift card and a wash tub voucher. For more information, we have all the info right now on KSAT.com. A lot of eyes on Washington right now. Senators on Capitol Hill getting ready to vote on a stimulus bill to help prop up the U.S. economy during the pandemic. ABC's Alex Perche gives us more background on who the bill is supposed to help. On a Sunday, Manchester's airport diner in New Hampshire is normally bustling. Now it's eerily quiet. A single waitress, a lone chef, and dozens of tables all empty. This slow time of year, we have about 900 employees. We've let 700, I hate to say, let go on furlough. In Durham, North Carolina, the closure of the local market has forced some farmers to set up shop in an empty parking lot. I've got kids home from college, so um, it's not easy to keep teenage boys filled up with food. Americans simply trying to get by, looking to Washington for help. On Capitol Hill, negotiations over a Republican-backed $2 trillion stimulus bill to help the economy recover from the outbreak hit a roadblock. Democrats taking issue with key elements of the bill, including a $500 billion relief fund for corporations without any protection for workers. What it has is, for instance, a giant, giant corporate bailout fund with no accountability. We're fiddling here, fiddling with the emotions of the American people, fiddling with the markets. Still, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin is optimistic, saying we're, quote, very close. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve taking sweeping action, buying U.S. Treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, and municipal bonds in, quote, the amount needed to help American businesses. Actions it hopes will keep American businesses and their workers afloat. For personally, for me, it's you're looking like, am I going to be able to pay rent? As for the economic stimulus package, a procedural vote is scheduled for early this afternoon. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. story. We're going to be updating you a little bit later on the news at noon when this vote happens. And coming back local, one man dead after a shooting just a few blocks north of downtown. Police still searching for the two suspects they believe are responsible. All of this happening just before 3 a.m. Police called to the intersection of East Jones and North Alamo. And that's where investigators tell us two masked gunmen walked up to a pickup truck and opened fire on the man who was sleeping inside the vehicle. That victim transported to Bamsey. That's where he later died. Now the gunmen took off after the shots were fired and are still at large. An astronaut giving us his advice for social isolation. He's going to tell us what you can do to stay productive and sane. That's fun. And for many students, the coronavirus is ending their sports careers. We're going to see how one softball team is feeling the effects of, well, everything shutting down. And gyms are closed. We're all socially distancing ourselves, but we can still get a good workout in. Coming up later, we're going to show you how you can exercise at home. Welcome back 1210 this Monday afternoon. Fighting isolation during the pandemic can be difficult, especially as more stay at home orders are being given around the country, which is why an expert on isolation is giving us some ways to handle being alone. Check him out. Scott Kelly. He's a retired NASA astronaut who has spent a year on the International Space Station. He says it's important to tell yourself that isolation is simply the reality right now and it is beneficial for the country. Kelly also says that keeping a schedule is important and pencil in every part of your day. So you need to schedule things like work, rest, taking care of your environment, you know, your space station, whether that's the, uh, the house you live in, the apartment that you live in, you know, take time to go outside if you can, uh, sunlight, and nature is so very, very important to our health. Kelly also says to get your crew together, like your friends and your family, and find out how everyone can use their skills and advantages for the betterment of your space station, which is your home. 
He also says it's important not to get too frustrated if someone is struggling with some of the aspects of isolation. He says astronauts have their weaknesses as well, and communication is key to get through it. They get to play with all that lack of gravity. Yeah. I mean, they, they get to do all kinds of fun stuff. What have you guys done to kind of stay, quote unquote, sane during this time? Uh, in my family, uh, we actually found some material and we started creating face masks. Mm. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, I actually created a cloud handbook that your kids can use at home to see what kind of clouds are outside. We've also been opening our windows just to kind of allow in some fresh air. And over the next few days, we're really gonna warm up very nicely. Let's take a quick check of the aquifer. The aquifer is actually up about a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours, but unfortunately, this is a really big issue. All the rain in the last couple of days has allowed for mold to be very high, past 16,000. Now coming up, I'm gonna tell you about a significant warm up, and we'll be looking at temperatures close to 90 degrees just about every day of this week. I'll be back with a look at that forecast coming up. With all this talk about the coronavirus, you've probably heard about social distancing. It's one way to protect yourself. But what if you still want to work out, stay in shape? Well, this morning we want to show you a few exercises that you can do right in your home without the weights or a gym. First, push-ups. They've been around forever and for good reason. Push-ups can be a great way to work on your chest and triceps. And if you want a more intense push-up, try widening your arms to work out your back. Next, sit-ups. They may sound like a pain, but it's a good way to build your core strength and help strengthen your lower back. And then there's jumping jacks. Essential in any workout, jumping jacks is a great cardio exercise. It speeds up your heart rate, can help with weight loss, and prevent high blood pressure. Up next, squats. It's one of the best workouts to help shape and define your legs. And last but not least, stretching, which helps blood flow and muscular coordination. The best part, you can stretch anywhere, anytime. So if you're stuck at home, don't feel like you have to be a couch potato. You can still get up and move. Great advice and one that we all need to start today. I, I noticed how much more sedentary I have been mm. um, during this time and, and it's not good. The problem for me is snacking. Like there's only so much I can do in my apartment besides eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep checking the pantry to make sure I have enough food. So mm. there's always something. The snack supply, yeah. very low right now. Sarah, though, <laughs> very good news. You said we might actually see the sun today. We should be able to see a little oh, bit of sun. Nice. We're starting to see sun creep in south of San Antonio. And so if you're somebody who wants to go take a walk outdoors, just know that later on this week, the weather's going to be uh, much nicer for afternoon walks rather than this kind of dreary and damp weather that we've had the last few days. And it's so cloudy out there right now in San Antonio. It's 70 degrees. We've got a south wind at about 10 miles per hour. But the main thing we've been dealing with almost morning long are areas of fog. In fact, visibility was as low as a quarter of a mile earlier this morning, but now visibility has improved to about eight miles. So not as much haze on the horizon and you can see just about everywhere. We're starting to see that visibility almost completely improve. Temperatures, however, because of the fog and the low clouds this morning really haven't risen too much by the lunch hour. In fact, we're at 70 degrees right now at the airport, but we only started off at 63. So not much of a temperature rise because of that cloud cover. It's still 64 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 67 in Kerrville, 66 in Bandera. Notice though, it is a little warmer to the south and to the east of San Antonio. We've got 76 in Gonzales and 82 in Beeville. We're starting to see some sun creep in there, and you can see that on the satellite imagery right there. Look at that sunshine uh, across the coastal plain, starting to see those morning clouds burn off near Catula. And as we zoom in closer to Bear County, you can see that that clearing line is, is pretty much uh, right in our backyard. In fact, we're getting a few peaks of sunshine on the southeast side of San Antonio and the southeast side of Bear County. So I do think that we will be able to see peaks of sun this afternoon, and that means we will warm up 
just a little bit of sun this time of year goes a long way. In fact, by two, we should be at 75 when we start to see some sunshine. And then when we see the afternoon high temperature right around five, we'll be near 80 degrees. Those clouds should return late tonight again, and it'll be a mild and muggy evening. Take a look at the future cast. This is this evening. Again, those clouds will work their way back by midnight, and we'll start the day tomorrow for your Tuesday with low clouds again. But the catch is those clouds should clear out a lot faster than they did today. So because of that, it will be much warmer for your Tuesday than it is today. In fact, we should see a temperature afternoon high temperature in the upper 80s, closer to 90 degrees out west toward Hondo, Divine and Castroville. So that's for your Tuesday. And then into the week, we're going to see more and more sunshine. So by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we should top off near 90 degrees just about every day. We do get a front that moves through uh, late Friday, early Saturday, and that'll knock our highs back down to near 80 degrees. But still, you're going to want to stay cool this week. A lot of people are going to be cranking up the AC, staying inside. But if you do want to take some time to go for a walk outside, this week looks pretty good for that. If you're lucky enough to have a pool, you can go to the pool as well. Should be nice pool weather. Uh, taking a look at that planning forecast again, just remember that there will be morning clouds tomorrow, but we should see more sunshine in the afternoon than sunshine all week long. Front moves through on Friday, bringing a small chance for rain late in the evening, early Saturday morning. Temperatures will be cooler on the weekend. Max Ursula. Uh, just a quick question. That was you on a wakeboard? No, your... I was on a popsicle. A popsicle. Saying stay cool. <laughs> or in San Antonio, a paleta. Okay, a popsicle. All right. Uh, new today at 5 o'clock. The number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise. We're all being asked to stay at home, but there are some times when you do have to go out for things like food and gas. So what are the best practices to keep yourself and everyone else safe? We will explain. It's today at 5 after entertainment tonight. Spring sports not looking like they are coming back this year. After the break, we are going to see the impact that it is making on a local softball team. We'll be right back. Welcome back and happy Monday in light of the global pandemic. It has sports fans now wondering what is going to happen to the Olympics? Great question. Well, Olympic organizers say they are stepping up scenario planner for the 2020 games. The International Olympic Committee Executive Board says it is now debating a postponement of the games, but not a cancellation. They're seeing if Tokyo venues will be available at a later date. Organizers also looking into whether the Olympics can start in July as planned, but with a modified operational strategy. They want to be fair to the athletes who have spent years and some their entire lives training for these games. Also, they want to be fair to the ticket holders who may have already paid for their trips. Meanwhile, countries like Canada already coming out saying they are not sending their athletes to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Well, baseball and soccer will eventually have their chance to play again and finish their respective seasons. But college sports, specifically spring sports, will never really get this opportunity to compete again. That reality, a tough pill to swallow at TLU, where the Bulldogs softball team hoping to defend their school's first ever Division III national championship. Instant Replay's Andrew Seeley has more. The Texas Northwood Bulldogs are your Division III national champions. We didn't think it was possible. And then it started trickling down, and before you know it, Trinity and our conference backed out, decided that they were going to cancel all the events for the rest of the semester and send their kids home. And then we found out that the date, March 16th, was going to be our last competition day. Very sudden and unexpected and kind of a lot to wrap your head around in the moment. I think at first when he we sat down out here and went over it, um, it didn't seem like we were going to be done completely. Um, and it seemed like we were still going to have some time with each other left. Nine current seniors experienced glory last season, and all nine took the field in Seguin last Saturday afternoon for the last time. Kate Oliveira about to get us underway here against the Trinity Tigers' likely final games of the 2020 season. Launches one to the wall and gone. The Bulldogs once again won the last games of the season 5-3 to three and 2-1. to one earning head coach Wade Wilson his 300th and 301st career wins. A silver lining in a difficult moment. The best way to end right is with some wins, but um, 
I know it was tough too because it wasn't exactly the kind of, I guess we didn't play as great as we wanted to and you know, we expected to go in there and just dominate. But to end on wins for your last two games is a um, really awesome thing. It makes it easier and harder. One, because I think we were a really good softball team and, ha and had a chance to, to go out there and compete at that level. Um, the other side is that is that, you know, we, we just won and you kind of get to live with that for another year. You know, you can find some, some peace in there somewhere. I think us being given the chance to play Saturday is going to be um, I think we hang, hang on to that. A lot of kids didn't have that opportunity. A lot of coaches didn't have that opportunity. And that was Instant Replay's Andrew Seely. Now the NCAA offering another year of eligibility for spring sports. The seniors are currently figuring out when and if they'll return next season or not. And remember the best sports coverage from in town to the pros to our local sports. Just make sure to watch Instant Replay on Sundays at 11 p.m. right after the night beat. And obviously make sure to follow Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez, and the entire KSAT 12's team on social media. They are great follows. Larry and Greg, they kill it on Twitter. Some of my favorite follows. Also, RJ lot, Marquez. They have a lot to say. Always. Always. Which is good. <laughs> we like opinions. <laughs> All right, we're going to get back to the coronavirus in just a moment. The situation in Italy, unfortunately, is deteriorating, and the doctors there are overwhelmed. We're going to get an update on that country, which is seeing some of the worst of the pandemic. And back here at home, stores offering special hours for seniors, limiting the exposure for the coronavirus. We're going to see when you can shop at Trader Joe's. The Senate's still deliberating on the $2 million stimulus bill proposed to help the U.S. economy. Let's take a live look at what's going on right now in the Senate. Uh, they uh, voted just a few minutes ago to uh, end the debate on the closure. Chuck Schumer said that the bill favors big corporations as opposed to the American worker. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Democratic Party is just playing politics, adding things into the bill that have nothing to do with coronavirus. McConnell originally wanted the vote to happen this morning before Wall Street opened. However, now they're going to have to scramble. They've only got a few hours left because Democrats block the ability to have the session you're looking at before noon time, and they want to get finished before the end of the day. And again, that could have huge implications, $2 trillion. It could really impact the economy. Try to and Wall it. Street as well. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the pandemic, the situation in Italy continuing to get worse during this time. Hundreds are dying every day in the country, almost 800 yesterday. The number of cases continues to soar. ABC's Ian Pennell tells us how Italy continues to suffer. Over the weekend, a significant surge in new cases and deaths across Europe as it reasserts itself as the epicenter of this global pandemic. Italy, above all, is now far worse than any other country. We're seeing around 5,500 deaths. Almost 60,000 people in total have now been affected by the new COVID-19. Germany also seeing a significant rise in cases there. The Chancellor, Angela Merkel, having to self-isolate after she came into contact with the doctor who has tested positive. Spain is now also seeing the same kind of rapid increase in the number of cases that has been experienced across other European countries. Here in Britain, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is threatening further restrictions if people don't abide by the orders. Elsewhere, though, perhaps some good news. In Wuhan, China, remember that was the epicenter of the global pandemic. That went into lockdown two months ago today. And for the last five days, it hasn't reported any new cases. So that is one reason to cheer, but perhaps a warning from Hong Kong, Taiwan and Singapore, which has seen an uptick over the last week. And the thinking is that that's partly down to relaxing restrictions on allowing foreigners to come into the country. In other words, people are bringing the virus in, but also relaxation on social gatherings. People starting to come back out of quarantine, starting to get together, and that seems to have led to a further spike, a warning to others. Ian Panel, ABC News, London.
And heading to the Middle East, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo making an unannounced visit to Afghanistan despite strict restrictions on official travel. Now, this trip coming just weeks after the United States and the Taliban started a historic agreement. But violence erupted in the region despite the deal. And the State Department says Pompeo met with the Afghanistani president as well as his political rival. Pompeo had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with both men. A sign of one of the goals of the trip is actually to ease political tensions within that country. We want to give you some amazing good news. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but I have it on high authority that you will see the sun. Hey, you can actually see peaks of sunshine right there in that live cam. Um, yeah, if you right squint. There, if you squint. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right next to that Seguin Chevrolet sign. So we are going to be seeing uh, some sunshine this afternoon. In fact, I want to take you into outer space and show you the satellite imagery there and you can see each individual cloud essentially with this new satellite that we sent up into space. It's very wonderful. We'll zoom in closer and you can see that clearing line puffy cumulus clouds for Gonzalez starting to see puffy cumulus clouds for Floresville and again some thinning of this cloud deck around Bear County. So we are going to see a little bit more sunshine as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures much warmer southeast of San Antonio where they've been experiencing sunshine. It's 82 in Beeville, but it's 70 here in San Antonio, 71 in Hondo, cloudy up in Kerrville where it's 68 degrees. So a lot of us are confined to our homes, but if you are going to take the dog for the walk this afternoon, just know that it's going to be pretty great. Here's Fido's forecast in the afternoon, mostly cloudy, warm by 5, 80 degrees, and then we'll be seeing uh, peaks of sunshine still hanging around by 7. Should be cloudy again later on tonight, but look at that. You got the green paw just about every hour this afternoon and into the evening. I'll be back with your people's forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you so much, Sarah. Is it okay to be worried about a new virus like COVID-19? Yes, but it has also led to the mistreatment or stigmatization of others. ABC's Alex Prache reports on a troubling new side effect of the coronavirus. Since the novel coronavirus outbreak began in China, many people have generalized their fears and applied it towards all Chinese and Asian Americans. Fear is a natural response to potential signs of danger. In fact, it motivates us to prepare and protect ourselves from danger. But the stigmatization of Asian Americans in response to the COVID-19 outbreak is an example of when fear turns harmful. Stigmas hurt everyone by creating more fear or anger towards ordinary people instead of promoting informed conversations about the disease, which is the actual problem. In addition to fighting the spread of COVID-19, experts at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are also combating the spread of racism towards Asian Americans. Viruses don't target people from specific populations or ethnicities, which means that just because someone is Asian doesn't mean that they are at greater risk of infection. Regardless of whether or not you're in a position of authority, you can do your part in fighting the stigma and promoting the spread of accurate, trustworthy information about COVID-19. Reevaluate the outlets you get your information from and be cautious about articles, images, or videos you share online. Be an advocate for good and speak out against negative behaviors or statements both off and online. When facing public health crises like these, social support is key. Stigmas also perpetuate the spread of false information, which undermines the brave efforts of public health officials and healthcare workers on the front lines. Don't let fear paralyze your judgment. Empower yourself with information and share it responsibly with those around you. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Prache. IBM trying to help researchers find a cure for the coronavirus. We will see how they are partnering up with the White House during the pandemic. And if you're a senior citizen, you can actually shop earlier at places like Trader Joe's. We're going to explain how it all works and when you can get your groceries. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. In today's consumer news, everyone around the country is watching the stock market and the stock started to tumble this morning. As soon as the market opened, they recovered quite a bit. But now the Dow Jones is down nearly 490, well, actually well, nearly 500 points. We're going to continue to monitor the stock market throughout the show and we will see how the stimulus bill votes, if it happens, affects the market. And oil prices continue to fall overnight. The world's benchmark Brent crude actually falling about 4%, just under $26 a barrel. Demand for oil has been falling and oil producing giants 
Saudi Arabia and Russia have been in a price war now for weeks. The demand of air travel has also been dropping as countries place travel restrictions. Emirates Airlines, one of the world's biggest long haul carriers, says it is now stopping nearly all passenger flights this week. Hong Kong Airlines cutting capacity to almost nothing for April and May. The airlines say that they're going to be suspending most of their long haul services once the new state quarantine order takes effect on Thursday. And IBM is now teaming up with the White House to try and fight the pandemic that we are all dealing with. The computer company announcing it has an initiative aimed at increasing access to top-notch computers for the groups researching the disease. IBM working with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy and the Department of Energy. The effort is expected to supercompute resources that should make coronavirus-based research much quicker. The system will use 16 supercomputing systems, several universities, national labs, and many more resources. Overtime pay at Amazon, it's going up. Employees used to get paid time and a half for overtime hours, but now the company is paying them double. Amazon increasing overtime pay as online orders are swelling from people who are being forced or volunteering to shelter at home around the country. And big news, if you shop at Trader Joe's, they are joining a number of retailers offering special shopping hours for the elderly. Starting today, the specialty supermarket is reserving the first hour of the day for senior citizens. The company didn't give out a specific age range for the offer, but generally expected to be people 65 and older. Trader Joe's also says they'll have an extra line outside its front door for seniors that will provide those customers with a quicker entrance. There are two Trader Joe's locations in San Antonio, one at the quarry, another at 1604 near Stone Oak Parkway. I was actually at one yesterday and they were doing a great job at keeping the social distancing alive. We had to wait outside and it wasn't exactly nice out. Sarah though, telling us today, could actually take a turn for the better. Well, yeah, we're starting to see some peaks of sunshine out there, and I think in the afternoon we should be able to see mostly cloudy, if not partly cloudy, skies. Now, unfortunately, because of all the rainfall we've seen the last few days, mold is very high, past 16,000 today, causing some issues for those of us who are allergic to mold. But in the days ahead, we're actually going to warm up to near 90 degrees. So for today's Weather 101 question, Kids staying at home, listen up. This is your, your daily weather question. On average, when is San Antonio's first 90 degree day? March 18th, March 21st, April 8th, or April 15th? Take a guess, I'll have the answer for you. Hope you get an A coming up. <laughs> Our galaxy is a whole lot bigger than it looks, and it looks pretty big. And now scientists have been able to tell us precisely just how big it is. So this is an image from, wow, look at that. That is of the Milky Way from the Fermi telescope, and the part that glows in the middle is the Milky Way's stellar disk. Scientists measured it to be, here it is, here's the number we've been waiting for, two million light years across. Astronomers have long known how bright the how long the brightest part of the galaxy is. That's the yellow part. You see the yellow pancake shaped disk in the middle, which houses the sun in our solar system. But all that red on your screen in dark matter that emits no light at all made it a challenge to get an estimate of the full size. All right, so just to break it down a little bit more, here's a way to understand just how big it is. Picture a map where the distance between the Earth and the sun is one inch. If you put the center of the Milky Way where the center of the Earth is, the galaxy's edge would be four times farther than the moon is to the Earth. That is exactly right. That's exactly right. In two million light years, you know what that means? It means really if far. you were to travel at the speed of light, it would take you two million years to go from one side of the Milky Way galaxy all the way to the end. So what you're saying is the universe is very big. Oh my God, it's very big. And we are so tiny, but our brains are awesome and we can always learn new things. So you are not we are not insignificant, even though our brains uh, and our uh, little tiny bodies, our brains are big, okay? And so here's your Weather 101 question. Ursula, I'm gonna ask you to guess, okay? Okay. On average, when is San Antonio's first 90 degree day? 90 degree day? On average, when do we usually see our first 90 degree day? I'm gonna say April 8th. Ursula? You are a science whiz. I got an A. You got an A. <laughs> April 8th. This is my first A in science ever. <laughs> April 8th is usually when we see our first 90 degree day, but with 90 degree days expected this week, we're going to be a little bit earlier than April 8th. And hey, 
we need something to make us smile and the sun is going to come out and we're going to actually have pretty nice weather this week. It will be a little warm and a little muggy, but even looking outside right now, we are seeing some peaks of sunshine through this cloud deck and we've been stuck with the clouds for quite some time through the weekend and even into last week. We had a good amount of rain around San Antonio, nearly an inch of rainfall at the airport. It's 70 degrees outside right now. This is good visibility at a perfect 10 miles early today visibility was down to about a quarter of a mile so we've seen some improvement there we've still got limited visibility up in the hill country near Kerrville where visibility is down to five miles but still we're starting to see some improvement there and you can very clearly see where the sun is on this visible satellite imagery. Look at those puffy cumulus clouds south and east of San Antonio. We are going to see this cloud deck break up and we'll be able to see some sunshine. Even in northern Atascosa County, they're starting to report some sunshine out there. So this afternoon around San Antonio, expect to see some sun. Where the sun is shown through, looked out toward Beeville. It's 84 degrees, it's very warm. This time of year, a little bit of sun goes a long way. And so even though we're only going to get the sunshine for a few hours, we are going to see temperatures warm up to near 80 degrees this afternoon. We're at 70 right now. It's 73 Catula, 71 Hondo, 67 in Kerrville, 69 in Uvalde. So for the rest of the day, some sunshine at 2 will be partly cloudy, possibly mostly to partly cloudy in the uh, later afternoon when we'll hit 80 degrees right at around 5. We'll be muggy this evening with temperatures struggling to cool down too much. And by midnight, we'll be cloudy again. As we start our Tuesday, we will have areas of clouds, but we'll have more sunshine quicker Tuesday. In fact, a mostly sunny day tomorrow. Our weather setup, not too much going around uh, in the central plains. In fact, we've actually got a ridge of high pressure just over Mexico right now that's going to settle over, and that's what's going to allow for us to see ample sunshine in the afternoon, and temperatures will warm up quite a bit as well. In fact, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will be near 90 degrees, so we could have three 90 degree days right in the row there. Uh, planning out uh, your week, just know that if you are wanting to take a few hours to go outside after being cooped inside, maybe go for a family walk or uh, hike on one of the local trails, it'll be warm in the afternoons of this uh, continuing week. And near 91 on Wednesday and Thursday. We've got a front that'll move through on Friday night and early Saturday morning, bringing a small chance for rain, but it'll drop our high temperatures down into the 70s and near 80 degrees on the weekend. Ursula, Max. Thank you so much, Sarah. I knew it was April 8th because that's when I usually throw a birthday party for my son and it's usually really odd. <laughs> Fender offering some free lessons. We're gonna tell you how you can sign up to finally learn how to play the guitar while you're stuck at home. Welcome back, we have breaking news into the newsroom. The Olympics Committee coming out and saying that they are now officially postponing the Olympics. We talked about this earlier in the show in USA Today in an exclusive interview saying that they have made the decision to postpone the Olympics likely to 2021. The details should be worked out in the next four weeks, but like we said earlier in the show, we know countries like Canada and Australia have already said that their athletes cannot compete amidst this pandemic. Right, so after those two countries did that, the Olympic Committee decided we'll just go ahead and cancel. Absolutely, and that was just from USA Today. So we will have all the latest information. Make sure to stay with us throughout the day and obviously KSAT.com. If you ever wanted to learn how to play the guitar, now is your chance. So many people are staying at home. Now the guitar company's online school, Fender, offering three months of free lessons. You can learn to play guitar, bass, or the ukulele, but you need to sign up on the Fender website and it's limited to the first 100,000 people. And in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak, musicians continuing to perform for audience, but thinking outside the box. CNN's Rick Damagella looks at the emerging world of coronavirus concerts in today's Music Monday segment. Hi, my name is Chris. Is this on? As the world hunkers down amid the COVID-19 pandemic, musicians are getting in tune and continue to entertain us. <laughs> The Berlin Philharmonic went on with the show recently, performing to an empty auditorium and making its archive of performances free for the next month. The Dropkick Murphys weren't about to let the coronavirus stop their annual St. Patrick's Day celebration. The boys from Boston still performed via live stream. The show is available on YouTube in case you missed it. Because I missed 
singing for you guys, of course, is nowhere to go because don't we all feel that way? Melissa Etheridge is taking the online concert idea even further with daily performances she's calling the Stay at Home Concert Series. No tickets required, just head over to her Facebook page. I hope all y'all got your rubber gloves and uh, surgical masks on. From a polar opposite genre, hardcore punk band Cro-Mags streamed and recorded a free concert for its fans just days after a planned performance at New York City's Webster Hall was canceled. In the darkness I feel holy and some artists are performing online to help others in need. Singer-songwriter Lily Kershaw joined a trio of other artists on YouTube to raise funds for Feeding America's COVID-19 Response Fund. I know a place Down past an old shack with more and more musicians announcing live stream performances, this could be how we enjoy live music for the time being. Pushing my streaming capability to the limit in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And today, SA Live moving from Market Square into the KSAT studio. That's right, Fiona and David are bringing the fun to home base. Hey guys. We are bringing a smile to your face today by celebrating National Puppy Day. We're teaching your old dog some new tricks that'll up their brain game and fill you in on how you can help out some local rescues. We're also sweetening your day with a mouth-watering mm -hmm. cinnamon roll pancake recipe from <laughs> Whiskey Cake. That's right, you heard that right. Yum, 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 when they stopped by a while back. That looks absolutely delicious. Plus, things for the kids, the pets, for the whole family. How one local store is providing quarantine packages full of supplies to keep entertained while at home. And in case you missed the first time, the Container Store helps you get your home desk area organized so you can be as efficient as you can, hopefully making it a bit easier even with all the distractions you might be facing there at home. And as we mentioned, it's National Puppy Day, so we want you to share pictures of your pets. They can be doing anything. And it's National Puppy Day, but we want to look at all the pets today, right? So you got cats at home. We could look at the cats too. Why not? Yes, and They're part of it. You have reptiles. If those are your pets, <laughs> yeah. share them at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter and you may see your pet star in the show.